Welcome to Tools in the Shed. It's a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James, and with me is Steve. Hello. And Chesto. Hello. And this week, we're investigating the state of the union. The white hot part of the Aussie new vehicle market is in for even more changes. And we'll cover a trio of current offerings we've been living with this week, and we'll catch up with the world's nerdiest artificially intelligent android in this week's Muskwatch. (laughs) So stay with us. But first of all, we've had some feedback, which is always terrific. Thank you very much. Um, From comments at carsguide.com.au, we had Athena Williamson said, Evening, I just started listening to your show this afternoon, and now I'm onto my third podcast. I don't know an awful lot about cars, preferring a horse most days of the week. However, your show is so easy to listen to, and I'm loving it. Not to mention learning a lot about cars and the industry. Thanks, we're Athena. Actually, we're informing somebody. That's, that's unheard yeah. of. She loves to listen to a lot of horse podcasts <laughs> in the past. And they, uh, that's quite extraordinary. Thank you, Athena. Good. Incredible. Garth Rudland, also at comments at carsguide.com.au, says, Hi all, just a quick note of thanks for keeping it real in the previous podcast. The hindsight self-check is novel idea. Now, this is where we said we're going to put a, a, a stake in the ground and then revisit it at a certain time and see mm-hmm. if our predictions uh, came true. We haven't actually done that yet, but we've talked a- about it. Have you made the prediction yet? No. Oh, Richard said, uh, what did he say? Tesla wasn't going to be around in two years' time. That, oh, was, that oh, was last week. That's a big oh, last week, so okay. we've got a little bit of time. Um, so he says, that's not often brave by journos, um, hoping to catch the next big story. Um, and then he says, look, in this vein of the next big thing, he's proposing it's the Ford Puma. Ah. Now, not the late 90s little two-door coupe thing, but Designed the upcoming small SUV. So well, to bre- compete with likes of the CX-3 and what have you. Breaking news for you. Oh, absolutely. Is that it has just been confirmed for Australia to replace the EcoSport, yep. which was the uh, basically Indian market and this little year. thing we got. So and in, this year, in 2020. Yeah, 2020. So, so it's as, as Garth says, it's got this kind of Swiss Army knife um, engine that's used in a lot of different Ford products. Yep. It's a one-litre, three-cylinder EcoBoost. Which is, would that engine? be the same engine from the Focus Active Probably. thing? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no it's doubt. It's a good um, so apparently Australia is waiting for an auto, which means could have the, the, the scuttle buddies could have had it a bit earlier, but auto production was staggered after the manual. So yep, okay. it'll be the second half of this year. So it'll get apparently 92 kilowatts, 200 newton meters, which is an awful lot for a one litre, litre three isn't cylinder it engine. Yeah. But to be competitive, uh, there's no word on price, but it'll have to start under 25k. It'll yeah, ha- it'll I mean, that's to basically the benchmark at that, point. At that, for yep. that CX3 sort of money. But can you fit a washing machine in the back? Most likely not. Do you remember when they launched the EcoSport? We went to India and they, the, the big selling point of that oh. car was you could fit a washing machine in the back. And they showed, <laughs> depends, they showed pictures look, of someone doing it. I'm like, well, I've never thought of that. As it well. depends on it, how you define a washing point. machine. Well, if a no, small in human fact, how you define a machine. Board. But yes. that's right. It that's could be true. a very rudimentary washing machine. A rudimentary washing machine. Which All right. anyway. And then on YouTube, we had Greg Wallace, a regular, gives us a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Says, enjoy your In the Shed always. But drop off when you get to the Elon Musk stuff. No one I know gives a rat about Tesla. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, as Chesto and I were chatting earlier, the share price would indicate otherwise. Yeah, but people do care somewhere. Fair enough, yeah. Greg, and thank you. We'll take that on board and maybe just modify the way we approach uh, the old uh, Muster in, in future. <laughs> But he says, there is chat about a hybrid Land Cruiser, because we've been talking about that as well for a 300 series Land Cruiser, and how long the battery will last uh, driving through the soft sand, say, of Fraser Island. Um, all reports from the locals are, if off, Toyota. <laughs> what, for the for a hybrid? For, no, yeah, for no. Fraser Island. He says, not getting bogged at Inskip Point when the hybrid battery runs out of towing, uh, of towing the van through says, check out Inskip Action on YouTube for, for what a hybrid Land Cruiser would need to be able to do. Okay, right. Yeah. At the point, they're saying that without, you need, but surely it'd have torque. I mean, what's the problem? We're going to run out of... It's still, it would still have its uh, 3.5 I litre? think he's more concerned about just when you need it, your okay. battery drops uh, all of its okay. charge. Uh, and okay. you, but, but a hybrid, I mean, you've got the petrol in. Anyway, yeah. look, that's where Greg is. and he's, it's very he's easy out there in that Fraser market. Island. I've done it. Yeah, with or without, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Now, we've had Eddie, E double D. Two eyes, Eddie Fuentes. Fuentes mm-hmm. says so much focus on Land Cruisers as capable, t- capable tow, uh, puh, capable towing vehicles, due to its diesel engines. 
Let's accept that diesel engines will not be mainstream due to ever-tightening emissions laws, and let's move on to petrol, electric, or hybrid. That is 100% right, yes. He says, don't get me wrong, I have diesel engine fan. He's got a couple of diesel vehicles. I think he's got a, a V-Series Merc and a, um, an BT-50. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his next upgrade is going to be a patrol. Yep. Um, but he says, uh, let's just move on, which seems fair enough. And he also gave a shout-out to Richard Berry and said, look, our Viano, that's what he has, sorry, our Viano, is the same pimp daddy black, similar to the one that Richard drove. Ah, good. So yeah. he's quite happy to see But that he raises coming. a good point. Car companies across the globe at the moment are saying that it's just too expensive to make diesels clean. The diesels are coming to an end. There's, yeah. no, there's really no way to save that. That's well, right. I think, I think Australia is going to um, be a point of diesel tourism because we'll be yeah. the last place on earth but still selling <laughs> right. it. That's right. Yeah. Yes. We'll come here just to smell that sweet, <laughs> sweet smell and drive up a steep hill. Now, uh, <laughs> Get the greasy hands when you fill it up. I'm going to give this one a crack. Wang Xiang says, greetings from China. Perfect pronunciation. Great to see you guys talking about Chinese cars, smiley face. Uh, just want to clarify that the Hang Tian is indeed a blatant copy of the Land Cruiser because we talked about that it last is. time around. It's actually called 200. the Hang Tian. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the Hang Tian. <laughs> it's, no, so it's the Hang Tian. It's basically for the beach crowd. And uh, <laughs> says it is a copy of the Land Cruiser 200 without any wonderful Toyota traits. <laughs> Uh, so this well, is, the look. Like, this is said, one of the most blatant ripoffs you'll ever see. This he guy. says, it's in this day and age, when other Chinese manufacturers are actually putting out decent products, it's a shame that such a thing still exists. Yeah, it's a throwback so to the old days is. for sure. I and it took, made to, to find it, it took a lot of searching in, in on Chinese sites to even find their website. So yeah, right. they're not a major player. Okay. You've been to those motor shows in China where everything looks exactly like something else. I just want to go to the design lab of a Chinese car company. Just, it's just a guy with a photocopy of scratch no, and his And a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one of these. <laughs> now, Hammer Rock. Hammer Rocks has come in. He says, will I get a brand new half-price Land Cruiser Chinese copy instead of a 300 series hybrid Land Cruiser? Heck no. (laughs) I'd buy a used 200 series Land Cruiser instead. But the V8 diesel 200 series resale value might remain high if the 300 series hybrid engine doesn't cut the mustard in Australia. Yeah. Australia. Well, so, it, I think it will, though. I, to be honest, I think that reckon? engine will be perfectly fine. But the weird thing about Land Cruiser for me is that it is every time we write something about Land Cruiser, it goes crazy. There's this huge following for it. People are super passionate about it. Yep. But they just don't sell that many. Like, mm. it's it's not a, you know, it's never in a top 10 selling car, yep. but it has this unbelievably passionate it fan does. base, it most does. of whom you have to presume. Yeah. Don't own one. Narrow, but yeah. deep. Yeah, narrow, but yeah. deep. Yeah. If you drive a certain number of kilometres from Sydney, they, suddenly they become the only That's thing true. you see. Yeah, when the further you go, the more Land Cruisers there are. It's they're actually all in the middle. They're all hiding a, in the middle It's somewhere. a certain latitude. You move, uh, as you well, move yes, above that's that. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And all you see and is Hiluxes, 70 Series Land Cruisers. That's it. The occasional, that's what's on the occasional road. patrol. In Australia, anyway. Yeah. Um, so then De Kook, who's coming at us from Germany, says, Chinese cars, the few I've seen over the last few years here at the IAA, which is the Frankfurt Motor Show, um, including the upmarket Borg Ward in 2017. And I was there at the Frankfurt Show and saw that. And I remember the outside, I thought, that looks amazingly good. <laughs> but he says, and the Byton uh, last year were extremely, quote, icky, icky? inside. Icky. icky. As in icky? E-double-E-K-Y. That's what he's gone for. Uh, very, is he going that's icky, German for crap. <laughs> yeah, must be. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, I guess this year Rav Four. So he might be a uh, might be. A, he's coming to Australia. He's yeah. coming to live in uh, Australia. Diesel nothing, tourism. Nothing wrong with yeah, a Rav Four. There you go. Diesel, diesel tourism. Our first diesel tourist. And Colonel Lightseed says, China. They can build a hospital in a week. Yeah. Give it three to five years for a Chinese car to be in the top ten in terms of sales. So that's his bold prediction. Well, they are uh, certainly making a run in Australia. They, they're, but they're just about the only car companies. They're man Kia, who are making uh, sales Big going up roads. every single MG's month. MG's amazing. Yeah, MG's yep. killing it. And their it was up 100-something percent last year, you know. Their interiors do smell like the back of an ambulance. So there is a... Really? <laughs> How often are you in the back of an ambulance? Well, well, obviously, on a regular basis. It's, it's, a D, it's, it's got not the a smell you can get, though, is it? Oh, it's Steve again. They recognise the number. They're a nice place to get a rest. You're on direct dial. Now... Trumpy this week gave his State of the Union address. He did. We are going to give our State of the Union uh, chat. So in news this week, we've been looking at utes, Mm -hmm. and all of our top stories have been around that particular class of vehicle. And the first one was that it seems as though we've had the ceiling in terms of price defined for us because the Merc X class is <laughs> departing the scene. Yes. Uh, to be honest with you, that has been one of the slower deaths I've experienced. Right. It, it's been gone for about 12 months So you now. have experienced death. Yes. There's a slower <laughs> death. Well, that I've witnessed from afar. That's your career. Vehicular death, that is too, <laughs> officer. <laughs> that's right. 
Um, <laughs> but look, I was at the Frankfurt Motor Show last year. Right. And spent a lot of time at the Merck tent trying to get some information about the X Class. In fact, basically just trying to get anybody wow. to go on the record and confirm that they would eventually they, replace they it. They used to build their own building, and now they're in a tent. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how are they in a tent? <laughs> That's true. Uh, was it at least a marquee? Uh, no, it was just what a little. Did it have a lining? It in was the a top? two two men, just two a man, single little. Was it ten built by Nissan? <laughs> right, it was a bit of a squeeze in there, but uh, basically, you spent the whole time just trying to get to, to anyone to tell me that they were going to do a facelifted model or a new model or that it would be replaced. And of course, the answer was silence no, across yes. the board. So it yeah. was a pretty worrying sign then. So now the news last week. I think, or early mm-hmm. this week, that it's, it is going to finally meet its demise at the end of May hasn't really surprised anybody. Well, I mean, the cynic in me says people didn't fall for it. Yeah, you that's know, right. It was so much a Nissan yeah, with yeah. A, a little bit of Mercedes-Benz applied to it yeah. that people weren't willing to, to literally buy it, buy it as a proposition or buy it as a vehicle. Mate, the thing that blew my mind about that car more than anything else was that they didn't launch it with the V6 engine. They right. didn't launch it with the engine that would have actually stood it apart from the Nissan. They yep. launched it with the Nissan powertrains. Yep. To me, that just seemed like a, a huge mistake because it, 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 it just made it so obvious that this thing was a Nissan sure. with stars on the front. Well, the thought was that this would be the truck that the boss of the site drives. Or the, you know, land, really? or the landowners, as they describe the I just think the it's getting your own brand wrong. It's a rare case of getting yeah, your own brand yeah. wrong. This, does this apply to your brand? No. Is there anyone out there who wants your brand to do this? No. Yeah. The people who want utes want a Mercedes. If they do, it's the car they buy when they retire. Yeah. They don't want to drive it to Maybe. work. I just felt like it was a, like something just off, like I cherry coke. If you move a bit further to the, to the right on the vehicle spectrum and go to like white boxes on wheels, the badge doesn't matter as much. Mm. It's like, okay, okay, what's the economy? Is it, it What's the cost of service? And, and yeah. what's the longevity? And then you go to big heavy trucks and it's very much about, oh, what, what's the economy, longevity? What yep. am I going to get out of this thing? Yep. The badge doesn't count as much. Could be a Scania, could be a Hino, could be a Merc, you know. But in this ute segment, which is growing so much as a personal use vehicle, it counts for mm. sure. Yeah. I mean, you could say that the Ranger Raptor, for example, was a uh, to me was a new ceiling of how much people were willing to pay for for yeah. a dual cab Ute. You know, yeah. mm. that's that's big dollars, and it starts to look good, which the Ranger proves. Yeah. I don't yeah. think the Mercedes looks so fantastic. Oh, I think it looks all right. The, it the, looks all right, uh, but the top spec look... one looks pretty good. But I, as I said, I saw one the other day, which is a rare thing. I stopped and had a few deep breaths, <laughs> and uh, from behind, I'm just seeing Nissan. Yeah, that's you know, right. Like I'm, I'm not that's because you were walking radical... up a hill at that point. Well, yeah. 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 I'm on his way on ambulance. I'm seeing Nissan again. Following me. <laughs> so if you want an X class, get in quick. Yeah, I think and, and I there'll think, be discounts. So be the cheap. factory's going to stop rolling, you know, in a month or so. Is yeah, it? Is this uh, year, no, end uh, of so the production I think concludes at the end of May. End of May. Yeah. There you go. So but I tell you what, long. I did see recently was a Mercedes Benz Pure, which I think from memory is the cheapest trim level in the X class range, was actually cheaper than the equivalent Navara, which is incredible. Wow. So if you do want to steal on an X class, as a new shopping, car, as a new as a dealer demo, I dealer think, demonstrator. Yeah. Wow. It's so rare for Mercedes to get something so wrong as well. You know it's what? Like, I'm going to put my hand up here and say that I, I they rolled that car out over months before they launched it. And I was at some unveiling and some ride-alongs and everything else. And i got to say, I actually thought it would go well. I put my oh, hand up there and then. say, yeah. Mercedes badge on a car that you can uh, claim for tax, etc. I actually thought they were on the winner. I'm not surprised they're all that you got that right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, <laughs> nice. Nice. That's pretty much part of the course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I thought it was 2020 and not cause it's just because it's a date. Uh, I always thought it would be a mistake. You thought it would be a mistake? Yeah, yeah, I can right. say that now, can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But I'm I happy, always thought I'm happy to cop yeah, to get him that right. It was a total loser. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing that generated uh, a bit of interest was the Chinese use. Yes, speaking of Chinese and cars. And we touched on the three biggest ones that are possibly going to upset the apple cart. Um, and, you know, the accepted order as we know it at the moment is Hilux and Ranger and, and those established models. Yeah, but I these, think Triton at the moment is third, Triton's I think. doing very well. Yeah. So these are going to come and mix things up. And the first one's the Great Wall Cannon. Yes. Now, this car has been incredibly popular with our readers. People are really yep. excited about it. Uh, Great Wall, basically, it's their first proper attempt at a global ute. Uh, good engines, good equipment, good safety, good design, and they are making no bones about the fact that they are targeting Hilux and Ranger. Yep. In fact, it was benchmarked against them on and off bit road. Of, a bit of local tuning. Local the, testing and the, tuning the is, thing, yeah. is still happening in Australia, as I understand it. Uh, so that's the car that they, they think they can really make a dent with. Mm-hmm. So, and the bet, better news, I guess, for budget-conscious shoppers is the fact that they also are fully aware of the fact that the, the badge is going to demand a cheaper price point. So exp- to put it in their words, they said, when you see the price in this shoot, it will make you wonder, why am I spending so much on a highlights oh, yeah. and a Ranger? Well, I suppose the other thing is that although it's been an on and off proposition, Great Wall has been around in Australia for a while. Yeah. So it's not as if it's a brand new badge that people are having to get their head around. They may not know a hell of a lot about it, but they are aware of it. 
It hasn't yes. been a huge success so far. No. This has got to be the thing that changes it for Well, them. that's Probably. right. And look, the other thing is uh, they're not sure about the Canon name, yeah. as I understand. Well, so sure it might not arrive name. here with the name Canon. People but, think but they it, might buy a camera. It will arrive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Uh, what, what and is, also, why does this thing have wheels? Uh, uh, also, if you keep an eye out for it, we learned last week that it's, got, it's just received an early mark. It could be in Australia as soon as July. The, that's very interesting. The other one is the LDV T60, which will be fitted with a new twin turbo engine. That is so correct. That's going to give it a new uh, lease on life. Yeah, a significant lease on life for that car. Actually, it gets a new, smaller but more powerful, more efficient diesel engine. Um, look, LDV is actually making inroads in the country already. Their numbers, not not from a huge base to be fair, but their numbers are certainly going in the right direction. Mm. And they feel like this will be the shot in the arm they need to really make that next step. It's further ammunition too that a, an efficient, well, here we are talking about diesels <laughs> uh, being on the way out, but that a two litre diesel has become acceptable um, mm. in this market. That's right. Um, rather than what I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I get couldn't ever. I mean, um, the even the uh, even the Raptor in the old days, back in the oh. as we were talking about before the car based shoot days, if Ford had said, "Oh, good news, we're putting a little two liter engine in," people had set Just the place laugh, on fire. You, you know, See it's ya. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that one apparently is going to have 160 kilowatts. 480 newton meters. Yeah, which is a fair, which is enough. fairly sizable chunk. Yep. And then there are other uh, still rumours going around at the moment, unconfirmed at this point. I must admit that they're looking at the V uh, a V6 engine. Right. Um, so they have a partnership with Jeep's engine wow. supplier. Um, so there's talk, there's talk of that engine making a start as well, but wow. unconfirmed at this point. Well, but we do know the smaller engine's coming. We're talking about Chinese inroads into this market, and, and MG, uh, uh, amazingly, in, to my mind, has, has just been a huge hit. Uh, in the last 12 months or so, and they will have the MG Extender. Yes. Well, they might. So just to, just to put <laughs> F- MG Extender. into perspective for a moment, they, they sold uh, almost 1,000 cars last month, which again is up 82.7% on, on the year last on the month last year, and really puts them on track to sell you know, 11,000 cars yep. in Australia this year if they maintain that speed. That is really a lot of cars. It's I not mean, quite a top 10 player, but it's not a million miles. Because how it. many times have we all heard the spiel that says we're going to come in, we'll aim for about 5,000 in the first year, and yep. then we'll probably get to 10K mm. in, in three years. And here's MG without any, well, without any fanfare, really. Yeah. Has just come in and done it. And yep. not a lot of advertising. There was a couple of billboards near the airport for a while, yep. very much price speaks. But it's like, it's the story of like, if you've got a car that looks good yes. at a very cheap price, people are going to have it at least put in their consideration. And, and the so other critical and element there that good. MG has gotten right, and, and I don't know why more, more manufacturers don't do this, because it's a blueprint that's proven successful so many times in the past, most recently with Kia. But they, they got the design right, they got the price right, and then they stuck a gigantic warranty on it. I think it's mm. seven years right. from memory, or okay. even eight years maybe. But I think, I'll look into that. I think also mm. limited as the, like the advertising comms may have been the positioning line they've got I can't remember the exact words but to paraphrase it was something like an SUV with a, a certain amount of MG-ness you yeah, know that yeah, they're, yeah. they're trying to leverage that historical aspect of the brand and I think that's clever yep. because it does have enough cachet out there that people will kind of Oh, yeah, and it's MG, so good it's because the, the relation between the original MG and oh, this car is entirely brand-based. Yeah, it's but no, it gets but I think there's no letters, M and G. It's yeah. smart to say that you're, oh, smart, you, yeah. there's some MG DNA in there that we've been thinking about this whole MG-ness. Yeah. And what they yeah, do, yeah, they have right. like the kind of uh, tartany seats. Uh, so there's I, some, there's some kind of connection when you sit in the car that feels a tiny bit MG. You okay. go, oh, that's nice. There's right. one, one or two little touches. You go, oh, there's a, there's a bit of British in there. Correct. Now, on the yeah. extended... Actually, I'll t- take you back one step to the LDV for a moment. Again, this is just an indication of how seriously Chinese car companies are taking the Australian market. So the LDV did a T60 Trail Rider, which was their top spec T60 right. ute. Which I remember we saying sounded like a cheap pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah that's really right. Yeah, good yeah that's correct. <laughs> and your mum would only buy you the Trail Rider. Correct. Now, the, the catch of that is that they partnered with Walkinshaw and others yep. to develop a kind of local suspension tune for that vehicle, which they put out on the T60 Trail Rider. It's now across the entire LDV range and will continue when the new engine comes. So... Again, the, it's the Kia blueprint, the Hyundai blueprint. Uh-huh. Local tuning, built for Australian conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So that'll help them. So the MG Extender is, as I understand it, closely related to the LDV T60, yeah? Closely, mm-hmm. closer than a Navara and an X-Class, let's put it that is way. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, closer. Okay. That's so, quite a uh, different dress, though. Now, that car is, <laughs> I must admit, that car is still uh, uh, something of a question mark for the Australian market, right. but it went from being, no, we're not going to take it, to the bosses over there saying, uh, yeah, look... Um, there's potential for all vehicles. We want to continue to grow. Product is definitely going to be our biggest thing. We're evaluating it. Who knows? Yeah. So their argument, I guess, is if you can take a ute that has LDV's kind of 
abilities, I suppose, and then stick this already known MG badge, which is heading on the right, heading in the right direction anyway. On it, that's probably a, re- a recipe for Interesting. success. Interesting. I think it's a further stretch to try and leverage some um, MG brand equity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, that's but anyway. right. Um, so that's that's the Chinese invasion, and then we're talking about electric, which yes. is, uh, is the subject uh, of the year. Um, and the first one that may stir the pot is the Ford F-Series. Yes. Um, now, the fact that the F-Series would be here at all is, is a big question mark. Yeah. Mm. But then an electric one is another step ahead of that. Yeah. Uh, but they've had a prototype. Uh, Ford has had a prototype F-150 pulling some pretty impressive stunts, like drawing along <laughs> hundreds of rail carriages, yeah, yeah, 500,000 kilos of whatever. Mate, um, so it's, it's certainly got the goods, it would appear. I've got some good mail that the F-Series is definitely on the cards for Australia in the next generation. Right. So, so I, as, a, as a petrol uh, engine car as a pro- and, as and a product. Electric, as a product. Mm. Yeah. But, but, and Ford deserve credit, especially in the American market, for really pioneering the idea of one of their big, good old boy trucks going electric. So everyone else is talking about it now. GM's just done the Hummer. Yeah. It's going to yeah, breathe yeah. new life into the Hummer brand and yeah, make that yeah. an electric truck. But Which Ford were, really were the first to do it. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be amazing. Well, it's it's America's top selling vehicle. Yeah, yeah. The, the, world's top, been the world's top. There's been times where it's it's the world. Yes, there's definitely been times where the F one fifty was the biggest selling. As of right now, it remains it the best now. selling vehicle on the planet. Yeah. Amazing. The X-Trail was that is incredible. That for a while. It, it, oh, that was it's a bit of a wake actually. up call, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The F one fifty is the best selling vehicle in the world. It puts our market into perspective. Now, then you've got Rivian. Now, Rivian has picked up investors in the shape of Amazon and Ford. Has has tipped in money. So their R1T, the evocatively named R1T, yep. uh, is allegedly coming here. Is coming. I spoke to the boss of the company at the New York Motor Show last year, said right. absolutely launching in Australia. Get the American launch out of the way first, then I'll come back to you with timing. So they've definitely got an eye on us. Yeah. That is the car that I am probably most excited about, the R1T. It, it is genuinely awesome. So aside from it looking pretty good, I think it's it's got a really interesting, different kind of look to it that I, for one, find appealing. Mm. Yeah. What What's underneath? That, that 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 makes it different. So is it battery it, technology. Is it's it the a, skate. It is basically they pioneered the skateboard platform. That's why right. that's why all the car manufacturers bought into them. All okay. the critical stuff is is based in that is in that platform at the bottom, and you just put a sh- sort of new shell on top. Yeah. Hence the reason the R1T and R1S, which is the SUV version, are yeah. essentially identical. Okay. But to, this is the chief engineer who told us in at the beginning of 2019 that basically. It is a proper off-road truck, 14 inches of ground, of ground, ground clearance, 45-degree uh, inclines, 0 to 60 miles per hour in three seconds, 4.5-ton towing. Like, it's, you know, a 643-kilometer range. Like, wow. it, it ticks a lot it of boxes. Does, and you it? should be able to have so much space. That's the thing. Yeah. Was, yeah. I was, I was oh, it's huge inside, Ian mate. Ian Callum last Man. night, you talked about the eye pace and the, the advantage of electric cars. So what I love about designing those cars is... Hold on, I'll just pick way. that name up Ian off Callum. the floor. That, that made <laughs> yeah, a claim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Ian. Ian Callum, was it? We're just chatting Steve, last night. thank you. Yep. I think he, he likes Australia a lot. Okay. Um, but he was saying everything's out of the way, everything's between the wheels. He said, oh, you have so much freedom design you don't have with a petrol car. That's right. Yeah. And he said, why aren't people taking more chances? He said, if you give me a skateboard, I'm going to design something really interesting on top of it. Yeah. So... That, that gives them so much freedom. That's a really good insight, isn't it? Mm. Yes. I've got a counter-argument to that. I spoke what? to the Mercedes design chief recently. What's his name? Uh, I've just dropped it on <laughs> the ground. Uh, Ian McCallum. Never heard of him. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> He uh, he was basically saying that that was definitely the push at the time, and I, and Ian's been supporting that this mm. idea that we had all this creative freedom. You're on a first name basis. Yes, uh, Ian's Ian. been reporting. I, I oh, call I'm him. Supporting I call that. him my dog. He I texted me this morning. <laughs> anyway, uh, but the, their argument now is like we, we that approach it needs to be baby steps. They said that if you design a car too out of the ordinary, people just run away from it. You need it needs to be a kind of progressive approach. So we will eventually get to a point where cars look nothing like the cars are today, but mm. it's stepping stones. I've got to grab that segue and go with it because the other. <laughs> Is Here the Cybertruck. Yeah. Oh, right? So yes. talk about looking different. Yeah. And also looking questionable from an ADR point of view yeah. in terms of safety compliance. What about from a coefficient of drag, drag point, point of view? Like? Uh, are, Precisely. Are, are S words allowed on this podcast? Oh, well. Look. Because it, it, it looks like a bag something box. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, but it's allegedly coming here. And I think we are looking at a concept. Yeah. But that's the theme of what's coming down the pipeline yeah. at Tesla some years away, I would... I would. Uh, well, he's bombing, ar- he's bombing around car. LA in it as we speak. He that. said it's I a know. car, not a concept. That's yeah. bizarre. He, he said it's wow. going to look like And that, he's selling the thing. Like, people are taking... He's taking deposits on that People thing. are making their people, own. Yeah. People sell yeah. They can't wait. <laughs> there are so many great copies out of Russia. Man, it looks awful. All right. Well, look, that is really the state of the union. It's 
around uh, the Chinese invasion. It's about the disappearance of the X class. It's about new electrified options, and it is a hot part of the market, and it's going to get even hotter. I'm throwing one last thing in here. This, this is specifically for the fans who love it when we talk about the Ford Ranger. Yep. We'll do it last time, I promise. Just to give you a little update mm. for 2020, Ford and uh, Ford has closed the gap basically to the Hilux. So Ford sold 2,624 Rangers in January. Yep. Toyota sold 2,969. Ooh, that's very close. So it's close. So, and I do think that the Ranger will probably overtake the Hilux at some so point this year. So that gap could be closed space. by just a few V8s. A few V8 uh, the, Rangers. Well, that's right. There's the V8. There's talk of the V8 Ranger coming this year or next. And there's also, they've just patented or, or trademarked the name FX4 Max, which is supposed to be for like a baby Raptor. Raptor. So yeah. with a couple of new products, a couple of new trim levels, I wouldn't be surprised but to see that. Your mail, Chesto, is still that the V8 for a Ranger would be confined to the Raptor version or would it be a mainstream offering as well would I'd, you be able to buy just a Ranger V8 that think? I don't know okay. what, what car they're planning it for but it is yep. probably you'd have to think in terms of price it would have to be the Raptor yep. because it would be the closest to whatever the final price ended well, up let's being. just thank the Ranger for keeping Ford alive for, yeah Ranger and Mustang are the mm. two uh, two things that have kept the lights on and you know soon to be Puma yeah soon to be anyway, Puma that's right but now we'll talk about we'll, we'll reel things back a bit to the real world and in fact the preceding week and Steve, we'll check in with what you have been driving for a thumbnail kind of overview on what you make of it. And it's a Nissan product, and it's in fact, spoilers, Pathfinder. Pathfinder, spoiler yes. Alert. So I've just spent a few days in New Zealand driving all of their kind of upgrades, but the Pathfinder was one that struck me because I'd had one previously for six months as a long-term of a cars guy, and I didn't, um, I didn't ever really love it. I didn't love the look of it. It, it, it always felt a bit... A bit soft, a bit light or whatever. And it, this was uh, transformative. It was so much better. Right. And I thought it actually looked, particularly following one, it looked more like a Subaru. Right. Which is, oh, which is a strange go. kind of compliment. And you're seeing, yeah, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. You're seeing that as good. But thing. like an attractive Subaru. Okay. Like, like a Subaru without the weirdness. So you're seeing right. this is in Mercedes and Subaru is in You need I'm another ambulance. It's <laughs> soft. But no, it was really it good. Was I, was, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it because I, right. I really was happy to hand the last one back. And this seemed, this seemed like a car I would live with. Okay. Mm -hmm. So difficult to bond with the uh, the, uh, the the older one. The older one. And so it's really about it, the way it looks. The way it looks and the way it handles. Like the, the steering was so much better. Uh, performance wise but we drove some really challenging roads and uh, while, while the patrol made me feel a little bit um, carnival ride the, the Pathfinder was much more and, enjoyable yeah. sorry just remind me how many seats seven seats seven seater, seven it seats, is which it? I did yes. love that was the, the bonus but the seven seat thing yeah very practical and just the right size for me. I don't, I don't need something as big as a patrol. I'd be happy with the path. And line. where did you put Ian Callum? Was he in the third row or did you have him in the front? <laughs> I had his son who lives in New Zealand sitting on my knee. <laughs> yeah. I was sending him sketches of stuff. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> my no, I think it was more you were correcting some of correcting his work. Some of his work. Yeah, he sends it to right. you for the review. And then the, the front was good, but the back was no good. No, yeah, that's it needed right. a bit of work. Yeah. And you do that with Ian as well. I do, yeah, but I just text him usually. And so ETA for Australia has got to be soon then. Right. Very soon, I think uh, you put your orders in now. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you for that. And Chesto, moving on to you, another Nissan. Yes, product, a Nissan Festival. But a, a, a Nissan. A oh, Nissan Festival. A new, That's a new model I'm not aware yeah, of. Yeah, the Nissan wow. Festival. It's actually a 14-seater, which is unusual. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, no, but I, I've been driving the X-Trail N-Trek. So mm -hmm. N-Trek is the, uh, the the new sort of trim level that I believe launched on the Navara. It's flavour of the month. It's kind of rolling it out at the moment. Cash guy, oh, is yeah. there a cash guy? I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, but to yeah, the cash multiple guy. models. So this thing is based on the STL, which is 37700. This one starts at 38700. Currently, it's a 500 unit limited run, but it adds things like 19 inch alloys, a, a Bose eight speaker stereo, bonnet protector window shields. So there's lots of sort of extra kit that you get for actually, which, is, which turns out to be not that much more money, okay. extra thousand Great. bucks or something. Yep. Under the bonnet, 2.5 litre petrol with CVT auto, 126 kilowatts, 226 newton metres. What's the CVT like? Uh, it's okay. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a CVT. Those three letters <laughs> just always <laughs> make me I'd uneasy. Say, I drove it as well and I loved everything about it. Except they strike the fear into the heart. Yeah, exactly. So, and I would describe that car as being um, surprisingly, you know, comfortable. It's capable. It feels like it, 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 it's not too big. It's like perfect, actually the perfect size for my life. It, it's easy to park, easy to drive, no, no mm. sort of patrol-based issues. 
but it does feel old inside. I, I, I feel like I'm always harping on about the infotainment setups in cars, but this is a particularly old school one. It's kind of Bluetooth audio where you can play songs from your iPhone, but no Apple CarPlay, okay. no Android Auto. Yeah. You just put CarPlay in the cash car. Yeah, but I think it's ro- back rolling through some uh, products. Okay. And just for Athena's benefit, CVT means continuously variable transmission. Yeah, it's a type of auto. It's basically rubber bands on two cars. Yeah, that's right. So rather than a stepped gear, so there you go, Athena. We're thinking constantly of vomitous trash. <laughs> Oh, um, but yeah, but apart from that, I, I, yeah, I got to say, I'm fairly impressed with it. Very good. All right, thank you, Chester. I'll move on to. I was driving a Kia Sportage. It was the S diesel um, and all-wheel drive, just over thirty-five thousand dollars, which in this part of the market is a, a, a decent ask. I, I would have thought. Two-liter turbo diesel, eight-speed auto. Um, it's just under four point five meters long, so it's in that kind of medium size for uh, SUVs. And I would say the word that sums it up is pleasant. I found okay. it. I found pleasant. it pleasant to look at. It's it's slightly, it's somewhat divisive in terms of the way it looks. It's a, it's a little bit out there, but I I like it. And to drive it, I found it comfortable. I found it um, very kind of fluid on the road. There yep. were no not not much friction in terms of the way the engine works with the transmission works with the whole car. I found it very easy to drive. Yeah, good. And a very pleasant thing to be in through the week. So, so, it, so Kia, as we know, this year is, remains on a tear. It was one of the oh, only, in yeah. fact, I think it was the only top 10 brand to post sales again, yep. which it did pretty much all last year as well. And based on the back of product like that, yep. pleasant. Pleasant, Absolutely. Product, pleasant. Pleasant. I was in Pleasantville. Yeah, Pleasantville um, product. The week. We're, we're, we're at the Festival of Edison. You're in Pleasantville. <laughs> Just need a bit of boy Ian Callum in the design. Oh, oh, Ian. Oh, don't, Ian. Oh, good old Don't Ian. tell P. Shreya that. Him. Call him. Yeah. Pete, you mean Peter? Uh, I, so oh, I call Pete. him P. So. P. P. Dog. P. Dog. Okay. P. Dog Speaking of people we know and love, it's time for Musk Watch. Musk Watch. So here we go. This I'm going to resurrect a segment that uh, that we had some time ago, but we haven't had anything. Uh, sufficiently annoying uh, to bring it out of the out of the filing cabinet. I want to blow a gasket. I, I want to blow a gasket. Go for it. About Starlink. I think it's getting to the point where I'm genuinely grinding my teeth. It mm-hmm. grinds my gears, and I'm grinding my teeth. That is. So the Atlantic ran a story that reminded me of this whole saga, uh, and they say that the night sky will never be the same because of Starlink. So last year, his name is Christoph Stanek is an astronomer, uh, astronomer at I- Ohio State University. And he got a letter from one of his neighbours about a shed that they wanted to build. And it was going to be a foot higher than the fence between their properties. And was he okay with that? And it made him think, here's a shed. And I get my say yeah, on whether yeah, or not it right. can be a foot higher. Mm. The whole night sky is being filled with satellites and I've got no recourse yeah, no whatsoever. That's right. And it just made him angry. And I'm just as angry as he is. So apparently... SpaceX did kind of send a letter uh, for approval to federal authorities in the United States. So who controls okay, the sky? Who controls the sky? Um, held the required comment period open to the public, the American public. Um, so we've, we in Australia and other countries have got no say in this. No. This is just all happening. Uh, and the satellites have, as it transpires, turned out to be much more reflective than even SpaceX thought they would be. Mm-hmm. So the ones that are up there create this little trail of like a, a string of pearls going across the sky. And astronomers are reporting all of their vision is coming back with kind of white streaks across it. So it's difficult to actually see what they're doing. And we knew this, but it's now coming to pass in a much bigger way. And I find it tremendously oh, it, uh, frustrating. Kills it kills me. This would it is, be the case there'll be more, there'll be far more of them, of them in the Northern Hemisphere? Which will make our skies the uh, the place to come. Another to destination. Yeah. So yeah, come and drive your diesel and yeah. check out drive the night sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so there's another, and not only that, it's on for young and old. There's another company called OneWeb, which is launching its own set yeah. of satellites. So we're going to have this competition in space. But what are the rules here? Can anybody just start firing stuff up there? It's one of those things where regulations or some kind of control has to catch up yeah, with catch what's, up what's just happening. happened. You know, mm. someone's big idea and commerce has got ahead of the game yeah. and there's no regulation around mm. it. The problem with someone like Tesla doing that too is they, they uh, like most startups, subscribe to that fail fast philosophy, Sp- right? Sp- I would, SpaceX. 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 Yeah. So SpaceX. we'll just try it. We'll, we'll roll the dice and see what happens kind of thing. But you send these things up and go, oh, actually, they turned out to be far more reflective than we thought. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> I know. So it was sorry. too late there. We've just wrecked space. <laughs> yeah, and there sorry. are hundreds of them out there. Yeah. Oh, thousands. Thousands. And there's 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 more out there. About satellites running into each other and how crowded well, SpaceX, there. they want to deploy 1,500 satellites this year. 
1500. They're only small. Like, oh, I don't know how small, yeah, but they they're not your the big for Sputnik one rocket, style. Apparently. Like, the, they rocket can send can up hundreds. a whole spray of them yeah. with, with one launch. And yeah. anyway. But you know, but, they're going to provide, well, the idea is they're going to provide us with um, satellite broadband. So you'll be able to get satellite broadband from Starlink in Australia. But if you want it, you have to buy a dish. Here's the Who's point. Going to do that? Here's yeah. the point. On Twitter, someone shouted out to Elon Musk saying, Elon, can you put my fears to rest that there's nothing dangerous about using 5G? Um, are we not saturating ourselves in more exposure to EMF radiation and at higher frequencies? I love technology, but I don't like being a forced guinea pig. To which Elon says, get this, nothing medically dangerous, but 5G is getting a bit too greedy with their spectrum land grab. I thought... Hold on. Yeah. You've just gone for a space grab. Yeah, Here you are right. talking about that's someone. Right. Well, and, and a lot of the comments were of the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know he's up against. He's up against Murdoch because the, the spectrum he wants to use those satellites for in Australia to provide you with broadband is the same one used by Foxtel. And Foxtel already said, nah, you can't, can't do it. So there go the Australian government, which might control the regulations for the spectrum here, but can't control the sky because the yeah. Americans control that. Right. Yeah. And Murdoch is going to try and stop it. Yeah, but Murdoch controls both the Australian government and the American government. And so what he says will probably end up working out. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Twitter, which of course is a rich source of Elonness, um, we, we were mining that this week, and Elon said, "What if there was an AI programmed to want to pick as many strawberries as possible, and so it cultivated nothing but strawberries on all of Earth's land? Then it would be strawberry fields forever." forever. Oh. That's, a, that's a very funny joke. Is that did so, Elon write that? I have no One idea. Of Elon's people wrote that. If he yeah. if he didn't, he wouldn't credit the uh, author anyway. Yeah, well, that's still such. But so MSN came back with an image of, of the Joker, um, if, as in latest iteration of the Joker, um, Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Um, and with him next to it doing his daggy dance from yeah. the Chinese factory opening, and I didn't know whether that was a friendly <laughs> jibe, like oh you're just a Joker, or actually you're a worrying clown. We should oh, all be yeah, afraid should of. Be I had forgotten <laughs> the Chinese factory dance. That was quite uh, the moment too. Then Mark Barante <laughs> says, when this kind of thing gets eighty-five thousand likes, oh. you know things have gone horribly wrong, <laughs> and you now have a lot of the same followers as Justin Bieber. Oh. <laughs> but Musk actually on the record is saying he's worried about AI. Yeah, like he's actually worried. And yet he's company, d- and he's making stupid jokes about he's, strawberry. He's projecting. That's not the way I thought that's where he was going to go. Yeah, <laughs> his his worry is actually what he loves. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, so also on the Twitters, um, Elon says Tesla will hold a super fun AI party hackathon. At my house with the Tesla AI autopilot team in about four weeks. Invitations going out soon. <laughs> to which even Evan Parnes says, uh, posted up a pic of the dinosaurs. And all the dinosaurs are labelled Toyota and Ford and GM and Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hilarious. the meteor coming out of the sky that once again they're all looking at like, mm, that can't be good, which was a meme before, is Tesla. Oh, come Tesla on. Is right? So he's going to blow them away. But what I can't help thinking is the meteorite wouldn't have been in good shape when it hit Earth either. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean Tesla's like, about to crash to crash Earth? Crash and burn. Crash into Earth. <laughs> Precisely. It seems so ironic. Anyway, and we move on. We touched on it earlier. The share price, as we speak, $748, so nearly $749. Um, was six hundred and forty last week. It hit a high of nine hundred and sixty-one dollars eighty-six on Tuesday. Huge, it was getting crazy. perilously close to that one thousand dollar a share. Now it grew, in my view, a because it converted from like a car company stock to a tech stock. Yeah. Like it, mm. people's mindset, particularly in the investor market, brokers were seeing it more as a tech company. The batteries, the yeah, yeah, the yeah. electric Powers generation, all that, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. But um, also, people are sheep. Yep. And once mm. that started to happen, it was just a classic kind of push up to a bubble. Yep. But then it dropped back to where we are now, a couple of hundred dollars, in my view, because of profit taking. People mm. went, okay, now's the time. I'm going to sell it. But also because coronavirus may impact deliveries out of their new Chinese plants. China. So yeah, that's right. a, bi- a big plank of their future growth is just under a cloud at the moment. Yep. So again, that kind of sentiment is everything and everyone falls off it. I, I heard a rumor the other day that I th- believe is true, but I'm, I'm still sticking to my no research policy for the pod. Nice. That, Shut uh, the computer. That car company, just for the podcast? Just for the podcast. Are po- you joking? 
<laughs> well, never. <laughs> That's your way of life. Uh, well, Ian texted me last night about yeah. this. Uh, that uh, car companies, certain car companies in China are actually closing some of their plants down temporarily and producing uh, and, and like sort of retooling them in a short space or, or reusing the right. space to, to help produce uh, medical equipment, masks, I see. things like that I see. for the coronavirus. So, the car factory wouldn't be very good at making masks. No, but I think they're using the space yeah. as, a, oh, as production space facilities space. rather or than the plants. Precise surgical devices. Or, yeah. mm, I don't want to. So, <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, there you go. So it's becoming quite serious over there. And my last comment for the day before we move on is that, mm. yes, there is, just to give uh, Tesla a bit of credit for a moment, Yes, he is definitely shaking up the old guard of the car world, but he will not be eliminating it. It's not a, it's not an asteroid crashing to Earth to take out the old players. But what he has done has, has inspired them to try and catch up in the EV yeah, space. Yeah, I think so. so. He does deserve a wrap. They may have evolved a bit. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. Is, well, you know, the Hummer EV, on the rear leg, no, everyone, yeah. everyone's kind of coming on board Apple, now. Apple stocks are worth a lot because they sell a lot of iPhones. Yeah. And if you want one, you can go and buy one. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's true. Yeah. That's true. Slight differences there with Tesla. One yeah, day I, they I'm might sell I'm not sure the car. delivery issues are the same elsewhere than they are in Australia. I think uh, I'm right. not sure that's the case. Because your neighbour, as you were saying, gave up. Yeah. Three years. gave up after no. three years and said, I want yeah. my deposit back. I'm just never getting this Was that for a Model 3 he was waiting for? Has he got the deposit back? I think he was in the process of doing it. He was having a work. He, didn't, he right. doesn't really want his money back because he loves Elon yeah. so much. I think I'm right in saying that the Model 3 is the best-selling premium car in Europe at the moment, is it not? Yeah, not so sure. they must be delivering them somewhere. Yeah, I just, not, they can't possibly here. hit the, the number of orders they've got. Yeah, like if, right. if iPhones fell that far short of orders, Apple would be in deep oh, trouble. Oh, yeah, to dive. You know? Yeah, that's but right. But it's a much bigger company. The share price see is the very, very healthy. Yes. Very healthy. <laughs> and with that, we have reached the finish line. Thank you, Steve. Thank and you. thank you, Chester. Thank you. And thanks to our podcast production overlord, Mr. Pritchard, mm. for his Jedi-like recording and editing skills. He's in the disco ball body harness and mm. studded goat hair ankle boots. That's amazing look. It is, yeah. It's probably one of his most striking for the year so far. Please pass <laughs> on the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast, or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Please do that. If you're an iTunes listener, please rate and review us. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. But before we go, a billionaire's in the back of his Rolls Royce Phantom as he pulls up to the lights. He notices a bloke on the nature strip picking grass and eating it. He orders the driver to park on the side road nearby, gets out, walks up to the guy and asks him, Sir, why are you eating grass? Bloke says, I'm hungry, have no money, so all I have to eat is grass. The billionaire says, well, come with me to my mansion and I'll feed you. Bloke says, I have a wife and two kids. The billionaire says, that's fine, we'll pick them up too. Bloke gets a bit cheeky and says, we live with my brother, his wife and their kids. <laughs> billionaire replies, I'll arrange to collect them all. Then the bloke asks the billionaire, why, sir, are you being so kind to me? To which the billionaire replies, my lawn crew's quit, and the gas in the main garden is half a metre tall. <laughs> oh. right. Strawberry fields forever. <laughs> Strawberry fields forever. <laughs>